All you'll need is 18 gauge, some kind of copper based wire. This is silver plated, non-tarnished, silver um, coated copper and six millimeter beads. These are little amethysts. Silver and amethyst go great together, but you can do any kind of copper and any kind of beads you like. Um, but six millimeter works best for this. And make sure ahead of time that the hole in your bead fits. You could do 20 gauge, you could do beads slightly bigger or smaller. It, it's up to you, but this is what will work, I found. So you're gonna take about two feet, a two foot strand, and three of them, three two feet strands, maybe um, in meters, they're about two thirds of a meter each, but take three of them, find the ends, put the ends together, come back all the way back, make sure your ends are even on both sides, and then find the very middle, or as close as you can to the very middle, and just roll it into a loop. It doesn't have to be wonderful or perfect, just basically a loop about eight millimeters to 10 millimeters across, or about half an inch across, big enough that you can kind of put one of your little six millimeter beads in there and it just kind of floats on top. And then give it a twist. And one more twist. Then flatten all these guys out and separate them into Just kind of find where they where they kind of fall and then separate them into three sets of two strands two strands two strands and two strands like that and you can stretch out smooth out the wire as much as you want but don't go too crazy and then put two beads on your each of your two middle strands push them up tight but they're going to stagger like this and that's fine Bring the two ends together, pinch, and right below the, bo the bottom bead, bend. Give it like a bend to hold them in place. Oops. And then fold, just like you're just going to braid at this point. Now, fold these two over. Careful to keep the strands side by side so they don't roll over each other. So folding these two over, and then folding these two over that didn't look right I think you fold over these two first like this and then fold over these two push everything tight against the beads and then put the next two beads on what's the new two middle strands. I think you gotta turn a right angle first. This is only the second time I've done this. Um, and then after you get them on, turn another right angle like that. And then what looks like the side that's most on the bottom fold over. It's tight and keeping the strands side by side. And then fold over the next and this thing kind of wobbles, but you're making it into a cuff. So as you go, start to bend it into the shape of what's gonna be the cuff that goes around the wrist. And as you bend it, the parts are gonna lock into place more. So now these are the, the next two bottom. So you gotta bend the middle parts to go straight, then put the beads on, and then lock them in by bending them again like that. And then you can do your crossover and crossover. But as you get into the habit, it starts to get really fun. So we got these here, and now this, these two are bend them straight. And we're going to put the two beads on those. And again, as you start to bend these into the shape of a bracelet, they start to um, lock in place better. And uh, these little twists and turns are not gonna be perfect. They're gonna be organic, like a growing leafy vine, and that makes them look even prettier, I think, and also handmade. So don't knock yourself out trying to worry about, oh, that doesn't, that's not sitting on top of that one exactly the same way this is. Just go with it and have fun. And if it looks like a mess, I guarantee it's gonna look prettier on someone's wrist than if they weren't wearing anything on their wrist. 
Oh my gosh, naked wrists, how scandalous. So let's keep going. When you think you've gotten enough to go around the wrist mostly, and it doesn't have to be a big wrist, it could be enough to go around a small wrist because we're gonna add a little bit of links at the end to make it adjustable. So you wanna aim to make this a small wrist cuff, but I found one, two, three, four, five, six sets of two seem to be a, a good place to end it. So we're just gonna take these and twist them again. Oops, which way should we twist them? Let's do that. That looks best. And twist them twice just to be sure. And now we're going to take this on a right angle like this, wrap it. This is going to be a big fat curve of six strands like that. And it doesn't have to hold a lot. It only has to hold a jump ring or two. So you don't have to make it too big. You can kind of make it like pretty much the same as this one, except it's extra fat because you got six strands here. And then we're just going to muscle in these strands around like this to scarf it and come around like this and boom. And now we're going to tuck in six gigantic strands. Let's separate them like here. And you could do something fun too. You don't have to tuck them all in. You can do some little curly cues with some of them if you want. Uh, little, little swirls or whatever. But just to keep this simple for now, I'm going to cut them all and tuck them all. So I'm just going to go through here and cutting them all about halfway across the loop. And one at a time, or as they come, we're just going to push them down into the scarf there. And make sure they don't pop out the other side. Pushing them in, pushing them deep. And that's actually not as hard as you would think. Just got to... Put a little bit of muscle, push each one down in, make sure they're just pointing down into the scarf where they're not going to pop up and scratch someone and be pretty diligent with that. Make sure all of them are tucked as tight as you can. Check it, look carefully, make sure there's none that are kind of sticking out a little bit. If, if there are, you can, if you think you can tuck them a little deeper or give them a little extra pinch, go for it. And then we have, so now we have this guy and we're gonna bend it into fully into the shape of a cuff. It bends really nicely. It has a really good feel at this point. And on a skinny wrist, the tension alone can hold it. You could just pop it right onto someone's wrist like that. Um, but what we're gonna do is put a couple jump rings and a lobster clasp to make it adjustable so it can be for all different size wrists. I put two jump rings before the lobster clasp just because it's easier to get your fingers in there to grab it if it's not like super rigid. So the two jump rings allowed to move a little bit. And then I put about six or seven on the end so you can make it adjustable to many different size wrists. You could put more if you want. These are eight millimeter jump rings. And there we have it.